One of the most important bits of equipment that you'll need for today is a strap, like a yoga belt. Do you have something like that? And, and a chair. Yeah. Okay, today's session is going to um, be for the purpose of strengthening your body, but also stretching, and particularly working with hips and legs and feet, one of my favorite themes. So I think we'll begin now. Just take um, a lying down position on your mat. And have a belt next to you. But we won't use it initially. And once you're um, lying comfortably on your mat, bend your legs and have your feet next to your buttocks. Settle in. And then bring your knees up to your chest, hold at the front of your knees, and knee circles. So little tiny circles of your knees, just to warm up your back. A little self-massage. Little circles are good because then you're not tipping side to side, or as little as possible. And then go the other way. And then finally, what happens if you release your hands and arms to the side and then make those circles without holding your legs? Put a little bit of pressure through your back waist and your uh, shoulder blades, and that'll keep you using your core muscles, your abdominal muscles, which is always a good thing. And then circle the other way. And then once you've done that, then bring your feet back to the floor. Pause for a second. Always good to take a little um, moment in between doing movements just to feel how they landed in your body. And then lift your feet off the floor, knees towards your chest, hold at the front of your knees, and rock a little bit side to side. See what that feels like. Little rocking movement on the lower back, on the sacrum. Not wildly tilting, but just small movements are good. And then bring your feet back to the floor. And we'll finish up this floor um, routine by doing uh, a twist. So separate your feet fairly wide, almost as wide as your mat. And then drop your arms out to the side. And simply drop your knees to the right. Look to the left. Knees to the left. Look to the right. And let's introduce some... Uh, yoga breathing, so where there's a little bit of effort in taking your knees down, exhale. When you lift your knees up, inhale. Right, once more to the left, and then bring your knees straight up again. And let's add another little movement, which will uh, be a lateral stretch, a side body stretch. So drop your knees to the right side. They don't have to go all the way to the floor, just dropping out to the right. And then extend your left arm overhead along um, your left ear on the floor. And tuck your chin in towards your left arm. Good. And then switch it over and fold that left arm in. Extend your right arm overhead. Drop your chin towards your right armpit. Stretch away. And let's go several more times like that. 
When that arm is extended overhead, you can just roll onto the opposite shoulder a little bit, if that feels nice. It does for me. And going the other way. And all the while, you're, you're breathing. Okay, I'm going to finish on the left side. And then stay on the left side. And let's come up to all fours kneeling position. So take up a spot where your hands are underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. And then we'll just do the most basic way of doing cat pose, cat cow. Lift your spine up towards the ceiling, duck your chin towards your chest. Go the other way, drop your chest, look out just in front of you. And let's work with the breath. Exhale, your spine lifts up. Inhale, drops, and leading with your breastbone going forward. And then back and forth between the two po possible movements there. And then let's stop and bring the spine to neutral, that is um, more or less in a straight line. And then let's fold back towards child's pose. If your hips are not quite warmed up this morning, then take it really quietly. You don't have to go all the way to the floor. You can go partially. And then uncoil and come back up to cat. Let's go back with an uh, exhalation. Child's pose, your version of it. And inhale, coming back up. One more time, folding back, buttocks towards your heels, not necessarily all the way back. And inhale, back to cat. Now pause there and take your right leg back behind you. Tuck your toes under. Look back at your right foot. And then lean back into your right leg a little bit until you feel somewhat of a calf muscle stretch. Stretching the lower leg from the back of the knee to the heel. And then bring your chest slightly forward again. Tuck your right knee in towards your chest. So your right knee, right leg is off the floor. Knee towards your chest. And then extend that leg back behind you. Do that again. Knee towards your chest and your ribs, and then right leg back. Third time, let's go. Thigh comes in, leg straightens away, and then both knees on the floor again. And give your re wrists a rest, and just come onto your elbows for a moment. Turn your palms up towards the ceiling and extend all of the spaces between your fingers, between your index finger and your thumb, so your hands look like starfish. Then plant your hands again, lift your elbows, back on all fours kneeling, and we'll start on the left side. Take your left leg back, have a look at your left leg as you straighten it back behind you, and then lean back slightly, this is a strong stretch for me, the calf muscle, but it's an excellent stretch. And then <clears throat> bring that left knee in towards your chest, so knee and foot off the floor. Exhale, extend the leg away. Look out a little bit. Let's go back and forth between those two movements of flexing your knee and your hip and extending it. One more time, cap it off, and then both knees on the floor, and let's do that hip stretch, buttocks back towards your heels, resting on your elbows. Let it all go. 
We're going to move into downward facing dog pose. So back, all fours kneeling. This approach to dog pose is really good for strengthening and opening your upper part of your back. Step your hands out a little wide. Let's say your little fingers touch the edges of your mat. Then tuck your toes under and lift up knees and hips. Once you've done that, then step your feet out as wide as the mat. So your little toes on the edges of the mat. Keep your knees slightly flexed and then give your shoulders a good stretch. And if you want to venture into that calf muscle stretch again, then lower your heels. You might not get all the way to the floor, that's fine, but you can aim for feeling into a back leg stretch. Beautiful. And then coming down to the floor and stepping, so kneeling again, stepping your hands in. So when you finish up, they're going to be in line with your shoulders, your knees in line with your hips. Coil your feet under, lift your knees, lift your hips, and stretch up. And then pedal your feet. So one leg bends, then the other leg bends, and straightening in between. And see if you can let, allow yourself to enjoy that feeling. It's not just for your legs here, but it kind of ripples up your spine where there's a rocking feeling through your lower back, your mid back, your upper back, maybe your neck and your head. And let's take a break again, kneeling, elbows down, head comes down, buttocks folding back. See if you can let go in your shoulders in these breaks. All right, and last variation, come up into dog pose. Keep your hands that shoulder width distance, your feet the hip width distance, and then flex your knees and have a look at the angle that you created behind your knees. So maybe something like 45 degrees. And from here, you can lift your buttocks right up towards the ceiling. Feel where um, the bottom of your buttocks is. That's your sitting bones and lift them high. And here's the chance for you to stretch your shoulders. Well done. Without coming down to the ground this time, let's take a little walk forward. Feet come forward. Keep your knees bent. Walk your hands back. Good. And let's take um, the forward fold position there. So fold your arms into the crease of your elbows. Let your torso just hang free. If your back feels a bit tight here, then just adjust by bending your knees a little bit more and that might help. All right, and then dropping your arms, let them dangle and come up a little bit at a time with your head coming up last and all the way up to standing. All right, so I think we'll work on these front thigh muscles now, um, your quadriceps. So have your chair there. <coughs> I'm going to keep mine against the wall so it doesn't slip away from me. Um, and <coughs> once you've got your chair set up, then face <coughs> away from your chair. Excuse me. <coughs> hmm. Frog in my throat. So facing away from the chair. How far away? Well, it's always tempting to sit in a chair. So let's do that. Let's have a seat. Be towards the front edge of the chair and have your feet directly underneath your knees. Now you've um, gauged your distance. So come up to standing again. This is called chair pose. 
or properly utkatasana in Sanskrit. So at the same time as I raise my arms, I'm going to bend my knees <coughs> and bring my buttocks towards the chair but not have a seat. So let's try that. Inhale, arms up. Arms come up just in line with the front of your cheeks or along with your ears. And it's as though you're sitting back into that chair, but you're not going to quite get it. Not quite yet. And then inhale and coming up and exhale, arms down. Let's go again. Knees bend, arms come up. And now let's adopt an attitude where we really, 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 really want to sit back into that chair. So to be able to do that, you're going to bring your buttocks back further. Maybe your knees back a little bit but you're not going to get there just yet. And then lowering your arms and relax again. How about a few shoulder rolls? All right, third time, let's bring the arms up, bent knee position. Imagine that you're holding um, a yoga block, one of those foam blocks between your knees, and squeeze a little bit with the intention of um, what? activating your inner thigh muscles. And the buttocks come back slightly more. And feel those muscles all around the tops of your thighs engage as you do this. And then exhale, bring your arms down. And let's take a break for these muscles. Do you have a seat on your chair? And step your feet apart as wide as the chair. Come onto your elbows. So you've just leant forward a little bit in a partial forward bend. And then bring your hands onto your legs. And a little bit more forward bend, but just so much that it feels like a good stretch for your back. More than bendy, more stretchy and rela release your head and your neck. All right, and then bring yourself back up. And let's take a lying down position on the mat, and we'll work through some of the muscles of your legs and also wake up your feet a little bit. So lying on your back, take up your belt, Now read your body. For some of you, you might need a support at the back of your head and your neck, a folded blanket, something like that, or a cushion. All right, and then let's start with your two feet on the ground near to your buttocks. And initially we won't need the belt, but it's right there. Bend your right knee into your chest and hold at the front of your knee little hip flexion again, thigh towards your outer ribs. Then slip your hand around the back of your knee and circle your foot and your ankle. Some, some cir circle movements with your foot. As little uh, or as big as you like, or feels good, and then circle the other way. Pretty much the knee, the lower leg, stay still as you're just working with the ankle joint and your foot and your toes. Okay, and then still holding at the back of the knees, take begin to take an extension of the leg, and then we'll work through Flexing, bending your knee, extending the back of the knee. Those two movements. And at the moment when you do what we're doing, you're um, working with a more stretchy movement. Let's make it stronger by working with resistance. So imagine that the sole of your foot is pressing up towards the ceiling. 
the sole of the foot parallel with the ceiling and pushing up towards the ceiling. Notice whether some of the leg muscles start to be energized more. All right, now time to slip the belt on. So when you've got the belt over the uh, sole of the foot, in the arch of the foot, you've got two ends of it. So one hand holding each um, side of the belt. And make some little circles with the whole of the leg now. Little works well because you can find the place where you co can work with the core muscles. So you're holding firm at the back of the pelvis, the sacrum, without any rocking side to side. Okay, and then go the other way. I'm just kind of juicing up the hip joint where the thigh bone meets the hip. All right, and then pause with the leg straight up. And <coughs> if you pull a little bit on the left hand, on the left, um, the inside of the left foot, of the right foot, it'll roll turning out facing towards the left side. If you pull on the right side, it'll roll and face towards the right side. So the inner arch of the foot turning out and the outer arch of the foot turning out. So in an anatomy, these are movements of inversion, eversion through the arches and the ankles. So just making the right foot come alive a little bit more. Beautiful. And then pause there. Take hold of the strap with just your right hand. The left leg still bent, the left foot on the floor. Now you're going to let the left knee drop to the left and take the right leg to the right. Just so far as that feels like a good stretch for you. And not so far that you roll over to the right side. So you might even bring your left hand down to your navel center and press back there towards the floor. So a really good groin opening. And how we can make this a little bit more for strengthening your leg muscles is bend your right knee in and then push out through the sole of the right foot. Bend in, extend the knee, push out, if you can feel those muscles on the outside of the right leg holding to the bone, those muscles strong. Good. Let's bring the leg back up to the vertical. And then we're going to do a crossover. Left hand takes up the belt. Right leg goes to the right over the left thigh. And let the left knee, knee drop in towards the right side. So basically, you've scissored the legs together. And then give that right leg a good stretch. Flex your foot a little bit. Push out through your heel. Do you feel then that those muscles near to the top of the thigh are working a bit more? Good. Bring the leg straight up. Bring the left knee straight up. Good. And then take hold of the two sides of the belt again and bend your right knee down towards your right side of your chest. When you look at your right leg or you look towards the screen and see my right leg, the shin bone's more or less perpendicular to the floor. So maybe you're at your maximum hip flexion here. Leave the position, take your belt off, drop it to the side, and then place your right foot on your left thigh. Depending on your knee suppleness, have your foot near to the left knee. You've got a little bit more space behind the back of the right knee that way. Or have the 
right foot, mid thigh. Then you can try this, see how you go with it. Lift the left foot off the floor. That will compress the knee. And draw the left leg towards you. It's fine just to stay to the floor with the left foot. You're getting a good hip opening anyway here. All right, undo all of that. Right foot to the floor. Then extend both legs out. And just in a playful way, shake the legs. Uh, what do you call, uh, jiggle the legs. Um, yeah, so in that movement, just no special way to do it. There's no right way to do it. Just a bit of jiggling. Maybe that goes all the way up into your hips and your buttocks. And then pausing, bend the left leg in. Hold at the front of the knee. Bend your right leg in and place your right foot next to your right buttock. Good, so you've got a good flexion through the hip and the knee here. Slip your hands around the back of the knee and then circle your foot. You might be like me, getting a bit of clicking in an ankle, or you might experience that on the other side. It just happens. And then circling the other way. I'm just aiming a little bit more for flexibility, mobility in that ankle joint. Okay, and then let's extend the leg, still holding behind the back of the knee, and alternately folding down and extending up. Now move into a little bit more work for the muscles by pressing up towards the ceiling and feeling those same muscles that you used for chair pose switching on. And we're not snap locking the knee so that you could even ha still have a little bit of a bend there, but pushing up through the sole of the foot. Right, and last one, and ready to slip on the belt. You've got the two ends of the belt. Take up one hand each side, and then let's do some leg circles. It's always good to keep curious about how the body's working or even noticing if you <laughs> feel like it's not working that well. And circling in reverse. And also comparing. Like, are the movements more um, easily done on one side than the other? And if so, why is that so? All right, and then pausing with the legs straight again. And take up um, that ankle roll, so turning your foot, the sole of your foot to the right side, turning the sole of the foot to the left side. Another fancy word for this is pronating and supinating. When you turn your foot to the left side, it's as though you're flattening the arch of your inner arch of your foot. When you turn your foot to the right side, it's as though you're lifting that arch on the inside. All right, and then let's stop the uh, rolling of the ankle for the time being and take up the belt into your left hand. Drop your right arm out to the right and then take the left leg to the left. And aiming to get a good um, opening through the groins if you could lift your head for a moment, just check and see that the knees are at the same height. If you go out too far to the left side, then you're going to roll on to that left hip. So turn on your abdominal muscles, draw the navel towards the spine, press back through the sacrum. Then let's try those knee bends. 
So bending your knee and straightening. With this movement, as though you're pressing out against a surface with the sole of the left foot, so the leg muscles have to work a little bit more. Upper thigh muscles, inner thigh muscles. Good. Draw the leg up to the vertical. Draw the right knee up to the vertical. And then take up the belt and shoot us your right hand to the crossover. Scissor the legs towards each other. And maybe give a little bit of squeeze through the adductor muscles, the inner thigh muscles. And then legs straight up. Bend your knee towards your chest. You could hold the two sides of the belt again. And then this is called in some yoga circles, happy baby pose, knee towards the outer ribs or half happy baby pose. Good. And let's move on just to get the hip opening. So placing left foot onto your right knee or mid thigh. Turning the left knee out, turning the left thigh out, and you're still right in the middle of your sacrum. Then bring the right foot off the floor, if that works for you. If that's too strong in compressing the knee, just keep your foot on the floor. Okay, we've done well there. And then place right foot down, left foot down, pause. And we can fit in one more uh, rotation for your spine here. Have your feet hip width apart. Bring your feet in close to your buttocks. And your arms out to the side. Drop your right knee out to the right side. And lift your left buttock off the floor. And now lift your left foot off the floor and bring your right knee towards your, sorry, your left knee towards your right shoulder. Good. And then replacing left foot to the floor, both knees up. Drop your left knee out to the left side. Your left foot, left thigh very close to the floor. Lift up your right knee. Bring it towards your left shoulder. Allow your head to look towards the right side if that feels nice for your neck. And let's repeat all of that again. One more round. Left, right knee drops out. Left knee towards your right shoulder. So the rotation a little bit more for your upper part of your back. Then coming back to center. Two feet down. Left knee drops out. Right, foot, right knee, right uh, left shoulder. Good, back to center. And then one more round all on your own. You can lift that knee quite high towards your shoulder. Then the rotation ripples right up your spine towards your inner shoulder blades. Last round, left right knee towards your left shoulder. Good, hold it there. And then we're going to come up to standing. So just roll completely over onto your left side. Use your hands to help you. And coming all the way up. Let's take some... Balancing. So I'm going to come up onto a bit of carpet here rather than on my mat. I just like to have as little surface between me and my feet as possible. So standing either on your mat or just to the side of your mat. Relax your shoulders. Let your arms be loose by your side. <coughs> and then think about this. So plan the movement in your mind before you do it. At the same time as you lift your arms, you're going to roll onto the ball of your foot and lift your heels up. So basically we're going to 
balance with the heel raise. And let's try that. Arms come up, heels come up. Keep your weight towards the inside of your foot. You might be moving a little bit like me. And at the same time, as you lower your arms, lower your heels. Good. Relax your shoulders. Let's have another go. Heels come up, arms come up. You might have found a focal point on the floor in front of you that can help. And then exhale, arms and heels down. Do two more in your own time, so you're not in any way rushed here. I've got one more to go here. All right, nicely done. So uh, with our balance work and the general theme for the month of March, we're going to do some one-legged balancing. But before we do that, let's work a little bit on strengthening your arm muscles. So come to face your chair. You've got your chair wedged in against the wall so it's not going to slip. And then bring your hands <coughs> facing the chair. Bring your hands onto the seat of the chair. And like dog pose hands. So instead of clutching the chair, you've got your palms open, all the fingers spread. I'm about uh, the distance of my own foot, foot length, one and a half foot lengths away from the chair and leaning into the chair. And then just create the feeling in your hands as though you're pulling your hands towards you. And strongly as you can. And feel what that takes to do that in arm strength. And then do exactly the opposite and push the chair away from you. And feel what that feels like in terms of your um, strength. All right, let's go back to pulling the chair towards you. So from the tips of your fingers towards your wrist, drawing the hands towards you. They're not actually moving, but you're just stimulating the upper arm strength and then pushing the chair away from you. So when we were working in class yesterday, somebody piped up and said that when you do the movement of drawing the hands towards you and do that again, it helps you switch on your core muscles. So that's always a good movement. And that might come in handy as we go along. So take a further few steps back away from the chair. Still, you've got your lean into your hands. And now, like a modified dog pose, move your buttocks away from you. And stretch that base of your spine by moving the sitting bones away and also tilting them upwards. And then at this distance, what's it like to draw your hands towards you? Can you feel how much work there is in your upper arm muscles? Okay, good. And then let's come all the way in and up to standing. Just a little bit of a break. Shake out your wrists, your elbows, your shoulders. And let's get back into it again. And then replacing your hands onto the seat of the chair. Take a few steps back away from the chair. <coughs> and I've gone back far enough so that my legs are li on a little bit of a slant. And then <coughs> your feet are strong. Have a look at your feet. Lift your toes, all five toes p um, facing forward. And then we're going to start to um, work in from warrior one pose to warrior three pose. So take a step forward. You're about a leg length away from the chair. Turn your left foot out a little bit. And then from here, bring your hands onto your hips. <coughs> Mm. 
Right leg is bent, knee is over your ankle, square off your hips, bring your arms up alongside your head. Reach for the ceiling, stretch up, keep that back leg strong, and maybe lean back a little bit into it so that you feel the buttock muscle engage, the back of the thigh. To move into warrior three pose, then lean forward over your right leg. Bring your hands onto the chair. So you can have the hands flat or you could grip the sides of the chair. And now straightening the right leg and lifting the left leg. Good. So we can <coughs> exit here by bringing the left foot back down. Bend the right knee. You're back to warrior one pose, arms up, inhale, and then straight right leg, exhale, arms back down by your side. Step left foot to right, and right foot back. Good. So you're asymmetrical in your hips here, and we're just going to adjust them as much as possible by bringing the right hip forward and the left hip back. Then bend your front knee at the same time as you raise your arms up. Hold it there. Do that lean back slightly into your back leg. Draw the left hip back again. And then moving on, looking at where you're going to land your hands and leaning over the left thigh, bring your hands down. Raise that right leg. Good. Now you may have a little bit of a lean out towards the left hip. See if you can pull that left hip into your body. Good. And then releasing back to warrior one. Take it quietly. Right foot down. Left knee comes back. You're still in the bent leg position. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms come down. Step right foot to left. And shake leg. Let's have one more round like that. Um, right foot forward, left foot back. Now we can move with a little bit more pace and warrior one. With the breath, inhaling. Exhale, lean out. Lean over the right thigh, raise that left leg. Now, if you want to challenge yourself with your leg strength, imagine lifting your hands off of the seat of the chair. Or maybe just one hand. Or the other hand. And feel how much the leg has to switch on to be able to do those movements. All right, and then moving back through, warrior one pose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, release. And second side. With the breath, inhaling. Exhale, keep moving. Supporting yourself with both hands. Right leg comes up. <coughs> Draw the outer left hip in. And then test it on this side. It might be completely different. Can you lift your hands away from the chair? Or even just a little bit so that you're light on. You're not bracing yourself with your hands so much. Or just one hand, perhaps. All right. And then happily... Releasing back to warrior one, that foot onto the floor, and arms up. And exhale, stepping out, and a few shoulder rolls. Good. All right, last um, in this series, we're going to take, hmm, kind of a cross between 
warrior two pose and tree pose. So be sideways to your chair with your left side facing the chair. And then balance on your right foot, another one-legged balancing, and lift your left foot onto the seat of the chair. So you've taken this shape of the pose, the bent leg, left leg. If that foot was on the floor, you'd be pretty much in warrior one. And then extend your arms out sideways. Good, and then overhead. Feel like you're li able to lift right out of the um, hips so the hips are lighter. And then bring your hands uh, to rest onto your hips. And in balancing on just your right leg, feel the footprint that your right foot makes. Feel the thigh muscles engage, the buttock muscles on the right side. And then see if you can lift your left foot a little bit off the chair. or even just have less weight on the sole of your left foot. Okay, good. And then bring your left foot back up, down, settle in there. Now, when I did that, I know what I did was I pushed my right hip out to the right to compensate to lift the left foot. So see if you can keep the right hip firm in towards the hip bones. Instead of a lean out to the side, you just stay good in, in straight posture again. And then give it a go one more time. And lifting the left foot or light less weight onto the left foot. It takes a surprising amount of work. And then let's switch sides. And in no particular hurry, <coughs> your left leg is your balancing leg, and now bring your right foot um, onto the seat, seat of the chair. If your uh, hip movement is restricted in any way, keep your right foot forward of your left foot. I have a r really um, open hip position. I'm able to do that. So I'm going to have my foot back a little bit further. And then arms out to the side, as in warrior two pose, and lifting your chest, and lifting possibly a little bit more if your arms are up. Feel the shoulder blades lift. And then take hold of your hips again. And then you might just drop into that left hip, you know, kind of lazy hip here, and feel what that feels like. Nothing supports you, really. So straightening up again and pulling the left hip into the body. Let's go and see how you can balance on that left leg and lift your right foot or lighten the weight onto your right foot. Good. Keep breathing. So no good holding your breath to hold the pose. And then releasing and happily lowering that leg. And let's go back to the seated position on the chair for forward fold and take <coughs> a comfortable position about a third of the way towards the end of the chair and come on to your elbows. And let go of any effort that's residual in your body. Relax your shoulders, relax your diaphragm. And if your back is ready to do this, then take a deeper forward fold and have your um, hands perhaps down your shin bones 
and read your body. If you know that your back um, doesn't support bowing at all, bowing forward, then get a good grip on your legs and project your chest forward by lifting your breastplate. Lengthen all of your spinal column outwards. Not so much down, but outwards. Good, and if you're ready to take a little deeper um, forward momentum, your hands down, up on your fingertips. Hands down, but buttocks back. Okay, good. And then find your way back up and all the way up. Last month we did an emphasis on um, backbending. So let's not let go of that completely. Let's introduce here in the sequence just a couple of backbends. They're really good for opening up your chest and helping the lungs bring breathe easily. So take a belly down position on your mat. And lengthen out along the mat. Fold your um, arms, um, your hands, and rest your head onto your fo your forehead onto your hands, or turn your head to the side. Have your legs all the way together or very close together. And then rock a little bit, hip rock side to side, and jiggle the buttock muscles. So you had to hold pretty firm through all you were doing before we got here. So just let it all loosen up again. All right, and then we'll work into strengthening movements again. And feel where your um, tops of your feet meet the mat. Press your toes down, press the tops of your feet down. And even though you're pressing your feet down, imagine that you've got someone holding or pressing onto the sole of your foot. And you ha you're working at res uh, with resistance to lift your soles of your feet towards the ceiling. Feel how the buttock muscles switch on the inner buttocks, the outer buttocks when you have that bit of resistance. Then let go of that effort completely. Let your legs just drop out. All right, let's go again. Bring your arms back alongside your le uh, legs. Rest your forehead onto the floor. Called um, Shalabhasana or um, Locust Pose. At the same time as you lift your head and your chest, you're going to lift your arms. But go on and create that resistance against lifting your legs. Your legs will stay down as though you had um, someone holding your feet down. Now lift your head, lift your chest, lift your shoulders, and finally lift your arms. As you've done this, then keep your pubic bone down and keep the legs strong. As you press your feet down and work against that resistance, the knees will straighten more. You're breathing. And then come back down to ground. We'll do that for one more time. Rest completely. Or you could fold your arms in and rest your head onto your hands. Soften your buttocks. Soften your leg muscles. It's always good to know exactly the opposite movement to be able to release from effort. All right, and then here we go. Bring your arms back again. Feel the buttock muscles switch on, working with that resistance again, and trying to lift your feet off the floor, but they're not gonna lift up. And then head comes up, chest comes up, arms come up, project your chest forward, can you lift your sternum from the bottom of the sternum a little bit more? And then finally, if you like, then let go of that resistance and lift the legs. Feel like you're reaching back to touch your feet. 
The arms reach back, the hands reach back, and then folding down to ground again and resting, head rests onto your hands. Good, let go of your buttocks, let go of your shoulders. And while we're here, let's do just one more movement. Um, it's partly a releasing movement, but it's also a strengthening movement. So come on to um, your elbows. The head lifts up, chest lifts up, come on to your elbows. And then fold your right <coughs> left arm so it's... Um, the forearm is parallel with your collarbones. You're going to rest on your forearm, your left forearm, and your left hand. Then bend your right leg in, your right heel towards the outside of your right buttock, and then see if you can reach back and hold the front of your ankle. If you can't quite reach, don't worry about it. It's... Um, possible just to have the leg bent and rest on both elbows then. Then to stretch the front thigh muscle that you work through a few poses, press the thigh down, stretch the thigh from the front of your right hip towards your right knee. You're not going to lift the leg off the floor, you're actually pressing the front thigh towards the floor. All right, let's swap it over. And allow your right arm to rest underneath your top chest. You're resting on that right forearm. Then bend the left leg in. And if you easily reach the front of the ankle, then <coughs> take hold there and press the thigh down. Or the heel is just towards the buttock. And what are we doing? We're stretching the quadricep, front thigh, at the same time as tightening the back thigh, the hamstrings. All right, and then let that leg drop. Come back to resting head forehead onto your hands. Bend your legs so that your um, heels close to your buttocks. Right leg, left leg bends. Knees are a little bit apart. Then cir circle your ankles again. And the other way. And then give them a little bit of a shake out. Draw your knees all the way together. Bring your feet together, so you've got that bent leg position, and then drop your knees to the right side, a little ways towards the floor. Lift your uh, heels again towards your buttocks, and I should say not drop your knees to the side, but drop your heels towards the side. And then what are we doing? We're kind of sashaying the legs side to side. just to loosen up the lower back. All right, and then finally, lift your head, lift your chest, <coughs> and come back into child's pose, but very slowly, because you're moving from back bend to forward bend. and then come all the way up to standing. And to finish the sequence, let's do a rotation for your spine. So 
So take up your chair. Move it away from the wall now, so you've got space around it. And then <coughs> take a seated position sideways, side saddle, right side to the back of the chair. So buttocks nice and settled onto the chair. When you look at your feet, they're um, directly underneath your knees and <coughs> separated a little bit. And then just easy rotation, turn towards the back of the chair and bring your hands onto the top of the chair. We're turning from left to right. And it's a really interesting thing. It's up to you. You can do this more forcefully. But just to see how much rotation you can get by intention and with the help of the breath. So generally, the inhalation is there for you to create space and the exhalation to create rotation. Go gently. Release um, any tension in the shoulders, in the shoulder blades. Good. And then let's go opposite side. And facing left side to the back of the chair, hands rest at the top of the chair. And then in these really small increments, rotating. Feel what a difference it makes when you let your shoulders ease out, when they're more relaxed. And create good posture by lifting up. But without lifting your shoulders. And let's complete there. And <coughs> turn so that... Um, you can sit squarely onto the chair, facing forward again. And from here we can do just a, a simple breathing exercise. So bring your right hand onto your left shoulder and allow your head to turn towards the shoulder and drop your chin a little bit. It's a long line at the back of your neck. And then we're going to take that right arm out <coughs> to the right side in a big, uh, generous gesture. And then tilt your chin up and look at back at your thumb. Exhale, fold up. Chin comes down. Inhale, open up. So once again, we're rotating, but just in that complete um, movement with the breath. Chin down, a bit of a bow with the chin down, and then a lift of the chin as you look back. All right, next time you bring your hand onto your shoulder, then exchange your hands. Right hand rests onto your right knee, left hand, left shoulder, drop your chin. Keep your shoulders down here, and then opening that left arm out to the left side. Follow along. It's a good movement for your eyes. And folding up again.
prolonging the inhalations and the exhalations a little bit so that you can have that generous kind of movement. And one more. Opening. And then both hands down. And we're ready to set ourselves up for the yoga relaxation. So take your time and get the props that you need to do that. This is probably the most important part of the lesson. So I've got um, a bolster to use underneath the backs of my knees <coughs> and a blanket to support my neck and head. Really nice if you have an eye covering, just a soft cloth or one of those eye pillows. And this time is for you. It's time for you to get initially in your most comfortable position. And you don't have to commit to being still until you find that optimum position. So a little bit of moving around and positioning yourself until you get there. And don't stint, so make sure that you are completely comfortable. And then once you've done that, let's say that our intention really is to let go initially just the work that you did through the session. So part of that involves releasing muscles and particularly through the hips, legs, and feet. And how do you do that? By letting yourself be supported by your props, by the floor, gradually feeling muscles release in any way that they're still gripping. And including your diaphragm, your breathing muscle. The muscles of the upper abdomen release. And gradually, breathing will begin to quiet down, to slow down, and possibly become more rhythmical. And check in the back muscles, the base of the spine, the back waist, you might feel the breath there too. As you breathe in, the back waist broadens a bit. As you breathe out, it releases, not so much contracts. So feeling the support of the props and the floor and the breath beginning to take you a little deeper into the relaxation. Especially noticing the exhaling breath. 
feel energetically that all the activity of the brain begins to slow down, maybe eventually to cease. As you make that transition from thinking to sensing and feeling, and especially feeling into the exhaling breath. Every out breath taking you more in inward and allowing you to be introspective. and calm and peaceful. And you've done well for yourself to give the gift of respite from whatever is going on in your life. To give nourishment to your body and mind. But now it's time to be into our activities once again. So very slowly when You're ready, bend your knees up and roll over onto one side. Give yourself a nice warm embrace there. Wrap your arms around you. And take the next stage gently to come all the way up to a seated position. And once seated, then we'll finish in the traditional way of joining hands in front of the chest, really joining hands in front of the heart center. And take time to feel into your own goodness, your own goodwill, your good nature. That is aided by having done the yoga practice. So gratitude for the practice and for coming together, each of us, to practice together. Namaste. Namaste.